So we're going to turn on the content organizer by clicking the activate button here. And now that we've activated the content organizer, we can go back to site settings. And with the content organizer uh, feature activated, notice here that we have a content organizer settings and content organizer rules. We also now have a new document library called a drop-off library. So we're going to go to content organizer settings first. And we are going to, uh, well, we might want to allow rules to specify another site as the target location if we wanted to allow users to upload documents and based on the metadata that they enter about those documents, have those documents moved off to another site, we check this checkbox. But for this example, all I'm going to do is have the users, uh, when they upload a document, have those documents moved to another list or library. I am going to check the checkbox here to create subfolders after the target location has too many items. Uh, after SharePoint has more than about 5,000 items in a list or library view, uh, the view starts to have performance issues. So we want to keep the uh, views from displaying more than uh, 5,000 items at a time by segmenting them into folders or creating multiple uh, lists and libraries or multiple views that display less than 5,000 items. So that's why we have here the default of 2,500. That keeps us significantly below that 5,000 uh, performance limit. And basically what it's going to do is create a new folder called submitted after and then the percent one here will be replaced with the uh, date that that folder was created. Now down here we have this uh, duplicate submissions option and the default is to create a new version for any duplicate document that we upload. If versioning is turned off it will automatically drop down to this option which is append unique characters to the end of the duplicate file names. So it'll add a, a uniqueness bit, uh, a value at the end of the file name to keep it unique. Uh, if we choose that option, then it'll ignore the uh, versioning and it'll always append the uh, unique file name at the end. Uh, if we choose the versioning option, but versioning is not turned on, then it'll switch to the second option. Now we might choose to save original audit log properties of submitted content if content has already been submitted to uh, the drop-off library or submitted someplace else and we're going to move it to the drop-off library. If we want to maintain that audit history, we might check this checkbox. But all of our documents are going to be newly uploaded, so there won't be any existing um, audit history. So now we have our content organizer turned on. We can go create content organizer rules. So I'm going to add a new rule here. And the new rule will be um, called project documents. And I'm going to base this project documents rule on the ProDataMan project documents content type. And basically what I'm saying is if this document that's being uploaded is of this content type, then do something. So that's the condition here. If the content type is equal to the current content type, one that I just selected, then we're going to move the document from the drop-off library to, well, I haven't created a project documents document library, so we're just going to move it into the shared documents document library. The error there that you saw, let's do that again. Let's uh, see what happens when we click OK. If we try to uh, apply this content organizer rule to a document library that does not yet have the content type applied to it, then it gives us the error. Basically what it's saying is that this target library doesn't have the necessary columns to be able to support uh, this document when it's moved over there. So let's go to site actions and we'll create a new document library called project documents create that document library and then go into library settings 
so that we can, and under advanced settings, turn on allow management of content types. Change that to yes. Then we can scroll down and click OK. And now if we scroll down, we have this content types section. And in our content type section, we can add from existing content types in our pro data man group the project documents content type. All right, so now we've got our project documents document library. Let's add one more document library called requirements documents. Create that just with the default settings. And again, library settings, advanced settings. And under advanced settings, we are going to again allow the management of content types. We're going to scroll down and we're going to click OK. And then we scroll down with our content type section. We are going to add from existing content types our requirements documents content type that's in the Pro Data Man group. All right, so now we've got two document libraries with content types applied the project management or the project documents document library and the requirements document document library. So one more time back to our site settings. And here we can go back to our content organizer rules. Add new item. Project documents. Select our project documents content type. Tell to automatically create the subfolders and put our project documents into the project documents document library. Now we don't get any issues because the project documents document library does have the project documents um, content type applied to it. Now here we can tell it to automatically create a folder for each unique value of a property. Well, the only property that we have is the due date. So I suppose we could add the due date as the name of the folder. Now, I'm going to go ahead and leave this. Normally in production, I change this. Typically, I'll use the project name, and I'll just want the project name as the name of the folder. But what this is going to do, percent one is the name of the property, so in this case, due date, and percent two is the value of the property. So it's going to say due date dash and then the due date of the document will be the name of the folder. Click OK. So now we have our project documents rule. Now we're going to do requirements. <clears throat> documents. From the requirements document. Content type. Destination this time will be the requirements document document library. And again, we're going to automatically create folders with a unique name, but this time we're going to use the project name field and just the project name, not project name dash, and then the name of the project. All right, so two content types that have been applied to both um, project documents and requirements documents and to the drop-off library. So if we go to the drop-off library and we try to add a document, when we browse to that document, like employment contract for Bobby Moore, and we go to upload that document, it says, hey, what type of document is that? Is it a project document or a requirements document? 
Well, we'll say the first one is a project document, and we'll set its title to um, just new document. Not feeling very creative. And we'll set its due date to today. And then we'll submit that document. Now, notice we were trying to submit the document to the drop-off library. But because we have those content organizer rules for this type of document, it's automatically moved the document to a new location, to project documents, and it created a folder called due date dash Friday, 29 June, 12th, uh, and 7 a.m. in the uh, regular time there. And now there is no document in the drop-off library. If we add another document, and this time, we use the uh, Paula Bento document. Click OK to submit. This time, we'll call it a requirements document. And notice the list of required fields change. New requirements. We'll set the due date to Monday, July 2nd. And the name of the project is SharePoint Implementation. And when we submit this document, same thing happens. Because we have a content type applied to it, when we set the properties for that content type, it automatically moves the document to the requirements documents document library and into a folder called SharePoint Implementation. When we click OK, we see there are still no documents in the drop-off library, but we have one document in project documents uh, inside of the folder with the due date, and one document in the requirements document document library inside the folder with the name of the project, in this case SharePoint implementation, and there's our one document. So that is the value of the content organizer, that it organizes our content based on the metadata that we apply to the content.